Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to our live stream. It's Ned from Caspio. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Hopefully you're having a good Monday and I hope you had a good weekend. So, and you're feeling refreshed and you're ready to learn more about Caspio and how you hopefully you can utilize whatever we learn in these live streams inside your own Caspio applications. Um, I realize that maybe today's topic uh, may not resonate with a lot of people because it's healthcare related. But you still might be able to pick up a few nuggets here and there along the way and incorporate that into your own applications. So let me know if you can hear me okay um, in the chat window. If you are able to hear me, please let me know. And then we can commence with today's Caspio Live. Hey, loud and clear. Good to know. Welcome back. Good to see you as always. I appreciate you coming back. Uh, hopefully everybody else can hear me as well. Uh, we do have... Um, a sizable application to review today, so brace yourself. <laughs> I kid, hopefully it won't be too bad, but as you know, I make everything available as a download at the end of the day so that you can learn from it and you can see how everything was created. Loud and clear, very good. All right, so let's do a quick overview of the healthcare application. We did this webinar not long ago, and a lot of people in that webinar uh, who are hopefully here today wanted to see what's under the hood and how everything was built um, I'm not going to be able to show you all the objects, how they were created, because there's quite a few objects, but I will point out like the most important ones in this application. But essentially, we have two portals. We have the doctor portal, where they can log in and, and, and um, track appointments, book appointments uh, from the calendar layout. You can see as a doctor, when I'm logged in, I'm able to see all of my patients laid out, all of my appointments laid out on a monthly calendar layout with all the patients, and then you can see how some, some appointments are going to be video calls, and some appointments that are not flagged as video calls will be in-person. I can also book a new appointment as the doctor. I can select my patient, appointment type. Uh, we can set the appointment date, set the time. I've disabled my buttons because a lot of our teams use this application as a demo, and I don't want them to uh, tamper with the sample data. Now, as a doctor, I can also see a list of all of my patients. I can filter, and then I can go into details. And in the details page, we're able to see all the related data pertaining to each patient. So we can edit the patient's details. Uh, we can view all the appointments that belong to that patient. We can see all the prior visits where we track all the vital signs. Uh, there's a very simple chart that shows me, it's a combination chart that shows me uh, different vital vital signs. So if I wanted to see a correlation maybe between the uh, the weight and the blood pressure reading, uh, usually there's hopefully a correlation there. If the weight goes up, the blood pressure will go up and vice versa. Uh, I can also see all the lab work or all the test results for that patient. Uh, let's see. And I can also submit a message to the patient's portal. We have some reports that we can generate as well. So I can see an aggregate across all my patients, all the tests, and how many we've taken. Uh, we can see appointments by month. And then we have some grouping underneath where we can see all the vital signs per patient. But you can also filter out for a specific patient or if you want to just see a specific year. You can create any type of filter that you want. It's up to you depending on what kind of data you have in the database. We can see all the messages in one place that we've submitted to our patients. And I can also see the surveys that my patients are submitting after they've come in for an appointment. And I have a trigger running behind the scenes that sends the link to the survey to the patient's email inbox uh, if the appointment is completed and it's been five days after the appointment. And we'll take a look at that, uh, how that was um, accomplished in just a few minutes. And then we have the profile page here where the... Uh, the primary care physician or the doctor can update their profile. So that's on the doctor's side. And then we have on the patient side uh, where we can see our appointments and with the doctor that we have the appointment with. I can see all of my prior visits. Oops, I needed to refresh this page. Okay, so where we see all the vital signs, including the doctor's notes, if there are any. And then we have test results which again is the same view that the doctor has, but now as the patient, we should also be able to see the same thing. And I've tried to clone and mimic um, many of the um, 
functionality that you see here from my own healthcare provider, which I liked, including the health snapshot where I can see my average blood pressure reading, my BMI, average weight, temp pulse, and then um, just a simple visual interface that shows me, tracks all of my pulse readings, my weight, and blood pressure readings. And then finally, we can see our messages submitted to us by the doctor. Now, you could have a messaging system going back and forth. Okay, it's actually very simple to implement, even in this use case. Um, it could look something like this. Let me show you a different example that I have up here. Just so you can see that in the live example that I'm showing you, the capability is only to send a message to the patient's portal, but there's no way to reply back to the primary care physician. But if you wanted to, you could have something like this. So let me just log into my other example that I have here. So you can see in this ticketing management system that I have, we have communication between the customer and the internal employee regarding a specific ticket. So if I go to, let's say, all tickets as the user, and I go to the details of that ticket, uh, I can have the communication going back and forth between, in this case, we have the customer and the internal employee, and they're just going back and forth regarding that ticket. I can add my reply if needed to, to respond back to the employee, or on the other side, to respond back to the customer, okay? And maybe I'll point out to how that can be accomplished in just a moment here on the table side, okay? And let you know what, what it would take to create something like that. Let's come back to my application. So we've gone over, and then finally, last but not least, as the patient, we can go into our profile um, and be able to modify our profile if needed. So that's the application. Um, I, the main reason why we built this app is for telehealth to showcase that, uh, especially at the peak of the pandemic, um, we received a lot of requests to build a telehealth system where patients and, and, and doctors can communicate on a video call. Um, and the way I, I accomplished that in Caspio is using Zapier and daily.co. Now I did a live stream about this a couple of weeks ago where when you set up the appointment as a doctor, when you set up the appointment, you're generating the appointment ID. Okay, it's a random ID, it's a primary key inside the appointments table upon submission. And what ends up happening is we send the appointment ID, so we're not sending any PHI via Zapier. The only thing that we're sending is the appointment ID. So then via Zapier, we're able to send that appointment ID to daily.co, and daily.co is a HIPAA compliant a uh, video conferencing tool uh, that a lot of healthcare organizations use. And what's gonna happen now is when you set up that appointment, you're automatically creating a room inside daily.co with that appointment ID. And then you use the link given by the uh, daily.co back in your Caspio data page. So when you click on that link, it opens up a unique link from daily.co along with the appointment ID. And now because the patient and the doctor will both have that appointment ID, they're able to join into that room and have that video call. And I'll show you how that was, uh, how that was built in just a moment here. So let's go inside Caspio. And as you guys know, with any Caspio application, everything begins on the database level to build out the tables. Tables are the foundation of any app and they are the most critical piece when it comes to designing database applications. So this application has a total of eight tables. Um, we have the table for our doctors and we have the table for our patients. I'm also using directories. Uh, directories, think of directories like a built-in IDP that Caspio provides. Uh, there are a lot of security capabilities and benefits to it where you can have two-factor authentication enabled. Uh, you can have a reset password capability and a lot of other password security policies that are enabled. Now, the approach that I found the easiest, especially if you're building a brand new application from scratch, is to actually build the tables first. So let me show you my doctor's table. So I have created my, I didn't even create the user ID. I actually didn't even do that. Okay, so I created the first name, last name, full name for my doctors. We have a picture. So if you recall from my application, we can see the uh, doctor's photo. And then we have the email, which I made unique. You don't even need to include the password field and you don't even need to include the account status to make doctors active or inactive. These are really the only fields you need to have, these five. 
And then later on, you can come back to this table. And if you need to add more fields to your doctors, come back to it and simply just add all of your fields. I'm going to demonstrate this really quickly so you see what I'm talking about. Let me just create one table really quickly, just a fictitious table here. We'll just say WPP, doctor. Sorry, it needs to have a doc ID. So let me go back. <laughs> First name, last name. Full name, email of the doctor, and did I add anything else? Uh, you could have date created. I don't think I added that one before, but let's have date created. So email is unique. This is going to be a timestamp, and you save the table, and let's give it a name, WPP doctor user, something random. Okay. So that's what I did. I created my doctor table, just like that, and then I went to my directories created a directory, and I converted the existing table to a directory. So I didn't set up a brand new directory. I just clicked on the link. I found that table, WPP, there it is. And then you can see the email is going to be mapped out to the email field, and we automatically create the user ID. So when you set up your directory, it's automatically going to create a unique ID for each doctor inside that table. Then you map out the first name to first name, you map out the last name to last name, and then create a new field for password. Okay. Yeah, I know you have brought this up in the past. I'm reading my comment in the YouTube chat. Uh, it would be great to have that communication. So uh, stick with me. I'm going to mention something at the end of today's live stream. Uh, I might as well mention it now. Um, you see this application that I developed? What I was thinking we could do um, in the future live streams is we could have a series where I show you how to build this all of this from scratch this entire application I'm still working on it this ticket management system but if you guys would like I can divvy up my live stream to let's say three sessions where we build this entire solution from start to finish together and then you can see how everything is created or do you pr do you prefer having more of like a quick tech tip type live streams it's up to you uh, we could try it and see if it works out if not, we can go back to how we have our live streams where we only showcase just certain features about the Caspio platform as opposed to having three different sessions as a series to build the entire solution. So just let me know what your preference is in the chat window. I can even do a poll later on to see how people feel about that. But if you want to see a full build, let me know. We just have to separate it into multiple sessions because it would take time uh, to build something like that. Anyway, that was what I was going to bring up at the end of today's live stream. So let's come back here. And then what you can do is you can just say activate my users uh, immediately. You hit convert. Okay, successful. I don't have any users inside that table. So now that table is officially a directory. If I go back to my application now of my patient portal, and I click on tables and now I open up that design. You'll see now we have the user GUID created in here and I can move that up and down. So if I select that field, I can move that at the very top, which is where I usually like to place my primary key at the very top. But the directory is going to handle uh, your account status, who's active, who's not active, and it's also going to handle the password field. You don't need to have that information inside the table. Okay, so that was my approach. That's how I did that. Okay, don't save. And then same thing with the patients table. You can see the patients table is going to have more fields because we need to track, you know, their healthcare insurance, um, allergies, uh, allergies, um, healthcare history. We have um, date of birth, some more information pertaining to our patients, but it was still the same approach. I didn't add the password field and I don't have the account status field. That was all created by the directory on my behalf automatically okay then we have more or less the main table where you still store all of the patient information so if we sorry we just looked at this table my apologies the main table would be the appointments table and in the appointments table it's uh, it's a many to many you have the appointment id that's the primary key that you create and then what you're storing here is two foreign or two foreign keys you have the patient id and you have the doctor id 
because you need to associate the patient to the appointment to the doctor, right? So one doctor can have many appointments for many patients, but that patient can go see more than one doctor, right? So that's why you need that joining table of appointments so you can see, you know, who's matching up with who. Um, and then we have four different fields here. We have the AMPM. I'm going to point this out in just a second. We have the appointment status. We have the appointment type. So the appointment status is basically going to be, uh, is the appointment completed? Is the appointment brand new uh, or pending? You know, you can have different statuses. Appointment type is going to be, is it going to be a video call or is it going to be an in-person type appointment? So if I go back to my application, you can see appointment type and I have two. All right. And then we have the appointment date, which I'm going to point out in just a second. But on the front end, what you're seeing is we have the appointment date and we have the time. These two are actually virtual fields, believe it or not. Okay, so there are virtual fields. Because today we don't have the ability to parse and separate the date and time data type into two fields, I create two virtual fields, one for my date field, and then I can, you know, set the time, maybe p.m., and then there's a hidden field here, which is called appointment date. So that's my hidden field on that form. So when you hit submit, you're concatenating, you're taking this information and you're storing that information inside that field as date and time. And the solution that you want to use for that is this one here. So separating input fields for date and time parts. And this takes literally just two minutes to set up in your application. If you follow the instructions, you will see you have virtual fields for date, hour, minutes. I just removed the seconds. That's a little too precise for me. There's no really need for seconds. And then you have AM, PM. And then there's a little bit of script here at the very bottom so you can concatenate that information into that field. It's actually very simple. Don't be intimidated when you see code. If you look past all the daunting looking code, it's actually very simple to, uh, to digest and understand. All right, so that's my appointments table. Then we have the messages table, surveys, and test results. These are one-to-many tables and also visits. And they're, all of them are linked to our patients table. Okay, so if I look at my messages and I click on design, we have the primary key. I need to know which doctor sent the message for what patient, and then you have the message itself and date sent. Very simple. Um, we have the surveys. Click on the link, it opens up the form that's linked to this table, and then you're simply collecting information, overall visit experience, we have some radio buttons, staff member service, how we felt about that, waiting area, how do we feel about that? I apologize for the typo here. And then you have a text area, how can we improve our services to better assist you, and date submitted and contact me. So that's the surveys. Then we have the test results, where we track all the, vi um, sorry, the lab work. So we have, you know, we're sending the lab work for that patient, which doctor submitted that, test date, test type, if it's an MRI, um, CT scan, what are our findings from that CT scan, and if there's an attachment, you can add, the, you can add that attachment. And then let's see what else we have. We have the visits. So here's where we track all the vital signs. Pulse, temp, blood pressure readings, uh, all that good stuff. And last but not least, we have a simple lookup table for all the test types, where we have MRI, CT scan, ultrasound, X-ray, where we can quickly use inside a dropdown. I don't have any views, and we have two authentications that are linking back to those directory tables, okay? So now let's move on to data pages. So we have 30 data pages for this entire application, and you know people love to ask me how long did it take you to build something like that, actually took me three days to develop all of this. And believe me when I say this, I know I don't mean to sound like I'm bragging or anything, but once you get the hang of it and you start to get your feet wet with how data pages work, a lot of what I do is just duplicate. When I build data pages, if it's a similar data page that needs to be modified slightly, I don't just create it from scratch. I just make a copy of it and I modify it to apply a different RLS, record level security, or different authentication, and then I just remove and add fields based on the user role and who has the ability to edit or just read the data. So that's why it takes me a little bit faster to develop this. I know how to copy data pages um, and just modify them slightly. 
So then on the front end, the main one that we're looking at is this calendar one when we first log in, right? So that data page, it's going to look um, very daunting. So brace yourself. Uh, but again, I'm going to try to explain everything in a clear, clear way so you understand what I did because you're going to see some low code as opposed to no code. And for those who are attending these live streams for the very first time, Caspio is first and foremost a no code platform. You can accomplish a lot using no code. But the benefit is that if you apply low code, well, now you can remove a lot of, um, um, you can increase your creativity and remove a lot of limitations in terms of dynamic workflows and things like that. Okay, so if I hit next, uh, one, you'll see I'm using my appointments table as the data source because we're trying to feed that calendar with the information from that table. I'm using my doctor authentication. Uh, I am filtering my data, even though I could add a search form. So it might be helpful to have maybe a search interface up here. If you'd like to be able to pull up just the appointments for a specific patient, that's something you could do. Uh, my appointment date. Now, one thing that you'll notice here, I'm using a value, a static value, January 2023. Uh, the reason why I do that is because I want my calendar when I log in to always show me the sample data. Right now, we're in the month of February, right? But if I didn't have that static value, you're going to be able to see an empty calendar with no appointments. Okay, so that's the main reason why I did that, because I want the sample data to show up right away. Okay, and then now you're going to see uh, what looks like intimidating code, but it's really not. So inside my HTML block, which you can insert very easily, I have a very simple div object. And all I'm doing here on my calendar, you can see the background color, this light gray or light blue. Okay, so you see the background color. And all the uh, information that you see in this div object is presented inside this blue background that you see, or light gray. Okay, so let me explain. We have some padding around our text or the information inside that box. We have a border radius of five pixels. That's why you see this round edge. And then I have a hyperlink. Okay, so this hyperlink here takes me to patient's details where I pass the patient ID. All right, and we have a lookup which looks into the patient's table to display the name. So on the front end, that's how I'm able to display the name, but you can see it's a link that takes me to patient's details where I see all that related information to, uh, for each one of my patients. Underneath that, we have a simple line break. We have the appointment date, which is measured just in time. So when you're inserting the appointment date, you can see I can only insert the time, short date, long date, or a string. So I just pick the time, that's why you see this at symbol, to only display me the time on the front end. And then we have the link to the video, so another hyperlink. And here's the static link given to me by daily.co forward slash appointment ID. So when you click on that link, let's say this one here that has the video call, it opens up that link given to me by daily.co with the appointment ID that's generated by Caspio, but passed via Zapier to daily.co, okay? And now I also have another trigger running in the background that sends the appointment reminder to the patient one day before the appointment. You can also do a one hour before the appointment. That's also helpful. So you can send multiple reminders. And then they click on that link and now they can have that video call using daily.co. Okay, so hopefully that explains it. And if you'd like to study that, just download the app later on today, import it into your account and you can see what I did. There's a very simple script running here to hide, hide the status or type in person. Okay, so if it equals to in person, you can see I'm using display none. So don't display uh, the appointment type. So if the appointment type is in person, style display none. That's why on the front end, you can see some of them have a video call. But if the appointment type is in person, it's not going to be displayed. Okay. And then because you have to have one field in the results page, I'm using a simple div tag here to say display none to hide that field and then closing to close that uh, on the calendar layout. Now, another thing that could look a little bit daunting here is inside a header and footer. Now, I did a live stream on this a little while ago. It's super simple to implement. It'll take you five minutes to do this, I promise. Even though you're about to see some 
gigantic code that looks super intimidating. It's really not. If you follow the live stream that I did not long ago on using a Bootstrap modal plugin, uh, it'll take you five minutes to do that. And even in the description of this video, you can download the Word document that contains my full instructions on how you, how you can do what, what I'm about to show you. And this is just copy and paste into your data page. You don't even have to do any other modification. Maybe a slight modification, but if you follow my instructions, you'll be able to do it yourself. And what the code is doing inside the header, uh, you're going to be able to see this code, which is essentially a button. So on my front end, you're looking at this button up here for new appointment, which opens up that modal plugin to a different data page. And the code that you see in the footer that you can copy and paste from that Word document is basically that screen that pops up where you have a different data page. So now when it comes to booking the appointment, let me cancel out of that data page. So this is our appointments data page. New appointment data page is a submission form that allows you to book that appointment. So if I click on properties, all you do, and you can follow my instructions, is just copy this part of the app key, okay? And then when you edit that button, so let's go back to our calendar. I just wanna explain how this works so there's no confusion. So you see the app key here? That's the same app key that I just copied from that submission form. And that's how Caspio knows. So when you hit that button and that modal uh, pop-up opens up, you're basically placing that submission form inside that pop-up. Okay, that's why we grab the app key and put it inside the button. Okay. Let's cancel out of that. And I do want to show you one more thing here, the new appointment, which is that submission form that I just talked about. I want you to see uh, what I'm doing with the submission form because I talked about it, where I'm using virtual fields. Okay, so these two are virtual fields and I have a hidden field that's concatenating that information using a little bit of script. So we have virtual fields for appointment date, Virtual field for time. Um, what is this one here? Oh, for minutes. And then we have this one here for the drop down for AM and PM. Here's my appointment date field. You can see that it's a hidden field, but we're taking this information and we're storing that information inside that field, which is a hidden field. And the footer is basically just doing that for me. In the footer, the script is doing that for me. So if you follow that script, that's on our how to, which is this one here. Super simple, I promise you. All you gotta do is just copy based on your localization. So I picked the one for US, I copy that script, and I just removed the one for seconds because I didn't really need that to, to be that precise. So I just removed this, this variable for second, okay, from my script. And then you can see it takes your values from date, hour, minute, I remove the second, a and PM, and it basically just concatenates that into your field, okay? Let's continue to our patients. This is a very simple tabular report that anyone can do. Uh, this is all using standard features. So if we go and cancel out of that, finally something with no code. <laughs> so let's take a look at manage patients. Tabular format based off of the patients table because that's where the information resides. You create your search fields. You create your results page fields to display the data. And I do have a very simple hyperlink here, which I made the full name to be clickable to go to my patient's details where we pass the patient ID. So this is a clickable name, you can see. And then when you click on it, we go to patient's details where we now see all the related information pertaining to the patient from other tables. So I'm gonna cancel out of that. And the one that I'm gonna show you is Again, this is all very simple using that modal plugin, that pop-up. When you click on that link, it opens up different data pages, right? So you can edit the profile, you can book a new appointment from here, you can see, same thing for that patient. But the one I want you to see is this chart where we see the vital signs and we're doing some basic calculation here in the bottom row. So if we look at uh, visits, this one here. No, not that one, sorry. Not that one. It's the one with the chart. This one. So I'm using a combination. We're gonna hit next. So based off of the visits table, because inside the visits table is where we store 
you know, all of our vital signs, blood pressure reading, a BMI, all of that good stuff. So we hit next, filter. We want to filter that information based on the patient ID. So we now need to receive the parameter name, PID. And in the results page, you have all those fields from the table and I'm using aggregation. So if I click on the insert button, I can add my totals and aggregation. I moved all of my values. You can see all the fields. And all I'm doing is a function average to get me the average across all of those columns. So that's why on the front end, you can see we have systolic, we have the weight, BMI, pulse, and then we are doing the average for each one of those columns. Okay. And then we have doctor's notes. So that's simple uh, field. And in the advanced tab, you're able to truncate and have the user uh, expand and collapse. So on the front end, you can expand and collapse if you need to. And then we have the chart and I used a combination chart. Um, and you can insert additional values and axes inside the chart. I have a total of um, one Y axis, two, three, and four. So that's why you see one, two, three, and four, one for blood pressure, one for weight pulse and average BMI. And all I'm doing for each axis, this one here is weight. Here's my value and I'm doing a, uh, just show me the actual weight. I'm not doing any kind of aggregation or calculation on the weight field uh, for that patient. Same thing with the Y axis here. This is, I think for blood pressure. Yeah. So you can see I'm using a line chart type to give me a systolic and diastolic. And then we have pulse and then we have average BMI. Okay. And I'm using a different marker just to differentiate uh, from one value to another. So that's how you get uh, this data page here. And I chose to display my chart underneath the tabular report. And that's very simple. You can just have it chart position be below, or you can have it be above. If I choose above and save my changes, now you will see that chart above my tabular report. Okay, so it's up to you. My preference was the other way. And then same thing with all the other ones here that you see on, on the same web page. Like you can have a tabular report that displays information from the test table. I can add a new test. One thing that I will point out about that modal plugin. So once you use that code in one data page, and I'm referring to the one in the footer section. So if we look at, let's say, patient's profile. Okay, so let's take a look at patient's profile. Where is patients, so patients details. If I click edit, again, in the header section, I need to have my button that's gonna open up that modal plugin. But in the footer section, I have that long code that's used to have that modal pop-up, right? Where we can place other data pages inside. But once you have multiple data pages on the same web page, like I have here, okay? Um, you don't need to reuse this footer code in multiple data pages. You just use it one time inside one data page. Notice how in this data page, which is, let's say, this one here for patient appointments. So I'm going to open up this tabular report. Uh, which is... Um, manage appointments, this one here. So let's edit. You will see that in my header section, I have the button, but in my footer section, I don't have that code. Like I said, if you have multiple data pages embedded on a single web page, you don't need to use that footer code in all of your data pages. You just need it in one, in one data page. Okay. And then the application knows to reference and call out that footer from this data page in all of your other ones. You still get that pop up and you just have to use the right app key in the button to launch that data page inside the pop up window. Okay. If you were using standard features without the modal plugin, then if I click on that button, it's going to have to open up a new page in my browser or just in a new page overriding that same tab. So if I click on that link, I go to a web page where I have my form embedded. That will be the simpler way of doing it if you don't want to use the modal plugin, but it's so much nicer to have everything all in one place uh, where you don't have to now load a new web page and embed the form there. It's seamless and it's very easy uh, for the end user as well. All right, 
let's take a look at a few other ones here. So for reports, we have... Uh, I don't really need to show you too much here. This is all pretty standard. You have a filtering option at the top. We have the chart, pie chart, uh, that shows you a distribution of all the test results. Uh, we have a 3D chart that shows you appointments by month. The only thing I don't mind showing you here is this tabular report that shows all of the data uh, grouped. So you can see how that was done. So let's go over here and click Cancel. Um, and that one is called... Reports, visits. I wonder if it's this one here. Can I preview? Yeah, it's this one. So let's edit. Uh, once again, I'm using a tabular format, but the difference here is you can see my data source is the visits table. And we're filtering based on two different fields. So we again, we need to receive the patient ID. Okay. And because I'm filtering up above, based on the year. So up here, you can see I'm filtering based on the year. I'm also in my data page, I'm receiving the visit date. So let's hit next. So you can see equal to the year. And then I'm passing the parameter from the search form called parameter name lowercase y. And then in my report, I need to receive that lowercase y in order for me to filter out my tabular tabular report based on the year received. Okay. And then finally, um, you can see I'm grouping my data here. So patient ID. Okay, which is the patient name that you see on the left hand side. And I've enabled my grouping, I have a collapsible group and collapse by default. So you can see how it's collapsed by default. Right. So I can expand manually if I need to. Let me cancel out of that. Uh, let's come back up here messages. I don't need to show you that's very simple surveys. I'd like to show you my triggers so you can see how that was done. Oh, was it a task? I think it might have been. Yeah, the task. So send the survey email. What we're doing here is we're checking against the appointment date. And I want to be able to send that survey email five days after the appointment date. And as long as the appointment is completed. So if I look at my list of patients, let's say for John Doe, uh, sorry, list of appointments for John Doe. All right. So as long as the appointment is completed and five days have passed after the appointment date, we send that email. So let me show you my task. All right. So right now I have it running, running on demand. Uh, I don't want to overload the server with having the email go out all the time. So typically the way, the way you would set this up is you would configure this to run daily. Okay. That's how you would typically do that, but I have it running on demand. So I want to send an email. So I included my action, send email, and I dragged that over to the right. All right. And then I'm basically merging my two tables together. So I'm merging my appointments table with the patients table. So I have a join here. And the reason why I need to do that is I need to grab the email that belongs to my patient along with some information here that you can pass as a parameter inside the body of the email. So after you join your two tables, my appointments to my patients, we have a condition here, which is checking uh, logical operators. And so we want both of these conditions to be true. So if the difference in days, between the appointment date and today's date is equal to five. And that's what I was saying just now. If it's five days after the appointment date and if the appointment status equals to completed, send this email to the patient's email. This is the reason why I needed to join my patients to my, um, uh, to my appointments table so that I can pull that email from the patient's table. You have your subject line and then the link to the survey form and then you pass the patient ID inside the link. So in the body of the email, they're going to see this link. Okay. And they're also going to see the patient ID because I need to send that link uh, for that patient. I don't want just anyone to receive that link uh, if they didn't actually have that appointment. Right. So then we stamp the patient's ID so that we know which patient submitted that survey. Okay. And let me see my other task that's running here. Uh, send patient appointment reminder. So this one's a little bit simpler, I think. Well, it's more or less the same. So the appointment reminder, it looks the same. Uh, once again, I'm joining my patients table to my appointments table. I have a condition here. Um, if the appointment status equals to scheduled and the difference in days is now between the time zone today's date and the appointment date equals to one. So if it's one day before the actual appointment date, and as long as the status equals scheduled, we send this email with an email reminder. This is just 
something quickly I came up with. This email is to remind you that the appointment is scheduled for uh, date. You can include other fields as parameters if you'd like uh, to personalize uh, the body of the email. So those two t uh, tasks are going to be running in the background. And let's see, anything else on the doctor's side? And then here on the surveys, we build a simple tabular report that shows me uh, what our patients are saying about the services that we provide. Very helpful, insightful info uh, for even if you added another layer to this application, let's say you have a hospital admin, right? And maybe only the hospital admin will be able to see the surveys, but maybe not the doctors themselves. Okay. And do I need to show you anything on the patient side? I think all of this is more or less the same. So on the patient side, we have, you know, for the patients to see their own appointments. So we're using RLS, record level security. I think that's worth showing as well. So let's go to the data pages for patients. Uh, my appointments, let's click edit. And then you can see I'm using RLS. So that when I log in as a specific patient, I see my own appointments. Um, and then on the calendar itself, again, it's going to look like it's very complicated, but we went over this just a moment ago. A script to hide all that information inside that div. We hide the appointment date field because we need to include at least one field. And if you would like, now, if you would like to have a button for your patients to book their own appointment, you could include a button up here as well. If you want to do something more complicated where the um, patient sees the available appointment times inside the calendar, let's say you have buttons presented for you and you book something for 8 a.m. on the 17th. And as soon as you book that appointment, that button goes away. You don't want some other patient to book and double book that appointment. That's a little bit more complicated. It is possible, but it involves a lot more coding. But if you would like, and also triggers in the back end, back end too. So it's a combination of both. Something that's possible, but it's, I would recommend just going through a professional services team if you want something that um, fancy and intricate. Okay. And I'm going to cancel out of that. Let me know if you would like to see anything else here. Everything else is more or less the same. Uh, you have a tabular report using RLS to show the patient their vital signs. Again, RLS to show the patient their test results. RLS to show the patient their um, vital signs and averages. And then message center so that we can, again, using RLS to, so we can see just our own messages as the patient. And then finally, you have the profile view as the patient so that you can edit your own profile. Okay, simple app. Uh, you can definitely expand upon that if needed, uh, depending on your use case and what you would like to have it. Yeah, you can download this app by the end of the day. So inside the YouTube description. So if you come back to this video later today, and if you expand the YouTube description, you'll see a download link where you can download the entire application and all the objects. And again, the reason why I recommend that you do that one, I don't think it's going to affect your naming convention with your existing tables. I always try to come up with a unique prefix for all my tables. You can see WPP, which stands for Webinar Patient Portal. I don't think you have other tables that have the same naming convention. So it's not going to, you know, create organizational issues for you when you import the data, uh, when you import the application. But when you import it, you're going to be able to see it on the home page as Webinar Patient Portal. You can open it and you can study and see how I did it. And you can repurpose a lot of what I do in this application for your other projects as well. Also, you don't really need that Word document because you're going to find all that code inside a data page. And it's fairly easy to, to understand. All right. So next Monday, um, we're doing more SQL. Uh, as I mentioned before, I don't know if you attended my previous live stream, but we're going to do some things on SQL. I wanted to show you, which is something I should have showed you because I said in my previous live stream that I would follow up on that, but I never did. So that's my fault. Um, here on the dashboards, if we look at the live demo, I wanted to show you how you could have multiple search fields. So if you have SQL for your boxes on your dashboard to pull up this info from your tables, 
Uh, before I, we only looked at one search fields, but one search field. But I want to show you how you can have multiple search fields to filter out your SQL boxes on the front end, uh, which is very helpful because you can drill into additional. So if I'm looking at just a central region, you're not going to see any values here because my data, my sample data is outdated. You can see it's from year 20 and 21. Obviously, there's not going to be anything in 2023. But if I wanted to now look at my central region plus maybe Jason Smith, you can further now hone in and drill down on your data to see how maybe Jason Smith is doing for that region for month of February and month of September. Okay, so we'll cover that next Monday. And then the week after that, I wanted to propose something. And you guys let me know in the uh, chat window if you'd like this setup. Uh, where you can, I'm going to show you both sides so you can see what I have so far. Uh, customer login. The customer login is very simple. Let me log in here as Sarah Lee. So the customer interface, what the customers can do is create a ticket, right? Title, description, category, and you can have your own categories. So when you submit the form, you see that ticket listed right over here. You can see which tickets are open and closed. Um, Total number of replies for that specific ticket. I'm still working on this application. It's not finished yet. Okay, I still need another day or two to complete everything, but um, you can go to ticket details as the customer and I can edit the details. So I can now close that ticket. This one's already closed, but I could reopen it. And I can add my reply back to John Doe. You know, if I wanted to say something like, hey, you forgot to provide an answer. Answered to my previous comment. Let me hit submit. Okay. So now there's Sarah's response. If I log back in as John and we go to all tickets, I should be able to see, uh, sorry, all tickets. I should be able to see now that eighth reply. So if I go to my ticket details, I can see Sarah's response, and now I can provide my own reply back to, um, back to Sarah. There's going to be a lot more to this application. There's another layer to this application where we have management. Uh, when management logs in on the dashboard, we're going to be able to see the performance and stats. Uh, lots of different metrics I plan on adding to this application where we can see... Um, how long does it take for a employee to respond back to the customer. How many replies does each employee has? How many tickets is each employee handling? So under open tickets here, when the tickets come in, I'm logged in as John Doe. These are open tickets. If I want to show uh, my initiative that I'm doing well as an employee, I want to assign this ticket to myself. I can go to ticket details. And you know what? I'm going to take on this ticket. So I'm going to select myself to handle that ticket. And then I'll be able to see my tickets, ones that are open and closed. And then we can go to all tickets. I don't have the reports page set up yet because I want the employees to be able to see some metrics to motivate them, right? So if I see that I'm in the bottom of how many tickets I'm handling, maybe that'll motivate me and uh, get me to be more proactive to take on more tickets and post more replies and have a faster response rate compared to the other employees. So to just to incentivize it, make it competitive, more fun for the employees. And then on the manager side, I haven't, I haven't finished that yet, but management side will see a dashboard page along with other menus. And on a dashboard page, we'll be able to see some more intricate metrics that pertain to our employees and customers and things like that. Okay, so we will, let me know if you guys would like to see a full build from start to finish. Okay, where we build out all the tables, build out all the data pages, embed them all into web pages. It's going to require a series, so maybe multiple live streams. Or if you like the setup that we did today with the healthcare app, I can do a quick overview, show you what's under the hood in one hour, and then give you guys the application to download yourself, import it into your account, and then you can see how everything was created. So whatever preference you have, let me know. Um, Maybe we can do a poll next week, give you some time to think about it. Okay, we can do a poll next week. And uh, 
However you guys decide to vote, we'll take it from there. Okay. Full build? Okay. We'll do a poll next week. How about that? So we'll do a poll next week, and then you guys let me know um, from that session how you would like to approach this. All right. Well, that was it for today's live stream. I hope that you enjoyed the content. Um, always a pleasure to see people who do come back week after week. Thank you so much. I, again, from the bottom of my heart, I do appreciate that. I know it's probably late for many of you because you might be in a different time zone. So thank you once again for, you know, um, powering through the full 50 minutes, sometimes longer, sometimes less. So have a good rest of the week. Have a good Monday. And I hope to see you next week for the SQL session where I show you how to build everything from scratch so there's no confusion uh, on how we... Well, now with chat GPT, <laughs> which is immensely helpful, uh, it, we can allow chat GPT to write our code for us as well and check against uh, your SQL statements that you might have in your, uh, in your data pages. Don't sleep on chat GPT, I promise you. Uh, I'm going to actually show you what I mean by that next week uh, to create our boxes. So if you run chat GPT and you tell it, use HTML and inline CSS to create four boxes side by side with a background color of blue uh, to start. Okay. And what you do is when, when it finishes writing all the code for you, you're going to just simply copy and paste that into your Caspio data page HTML block. And then you feed the calculated value inside those four boxes. Okay. And then later on, you're going to see, um, I'm going to try to use chat GPT just for fun. How inside in between these two brackets, you're going to be able to feed a parameter, which is a calculated value from Caspio to display that calculation inside the box which is basically how I get these four boxes in my applications. Give it a second, uh, held snapshot. You see these four boxes here. Okay. Okay, super, super, super helpful. I've, I've given this thing quite a few tasks and it hasn't really failed me. So it's very helpful uh, from a lot of different perspectives. Um, all right. Once again, thank you all so much for attending the live stream. I'm going to end the live stream now. Uh, I'm going to keep the chat running for a few more minutes. If you have any feedback or questions or something else you'd like to see in our live stream, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next Monday for some SQL um, training. All right. Have a good rest of your week. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.